And it's time for another quick take with the Real Estate Law Podcast. Jason Muth here with Straightforward Short-Term Rentals and Pride Away Stays. Uh, in this quick take, we're speaking with Eric Shore with Secure Future Tech Solutions out of Rhode Island. Uh, we spoke about cybersecurity, about hackers, all that fun stuff that happens to all of us all the time. We see a lot of scam emails, right? Now we're getting a lot of scam texts and a lot of those scam phone calls that happen where your phone rings and then it goes right to voicemail and someone's trying to get your information. It's legitimate. They're finding more and more ways to actually try to scam us. And we spoke specifically about how it affects real estate professionals and lawyers and law firms. Think about this, all right? If you're buying a property and you're about to wire a lot of money from one bank to another, once that money is wired, it's pretty much gone. So there are a lot of wire scams. There's a lot of people out there that are supplying incorrect information uh, to try to get your hard-earned money. And as a business owner, what do you do to actually help prevent this from happening? Um, give a listen to this quick take. Eric talks a little bit about some of the scams that are out there right now and some of the easy ways that people are actually infiltrating your system. Uh, and then we'll have a link to the entire full episode in the show notes for this. First of all, there's a common misconception out there that many people even today still have, particularly if they're running a small law firm or a small practice, they think that they're not a target. Like, well, what a hacker, why are hackers interested in me? I don't have anything of value uh, to them, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Now, if you're a real estate attorney, you're moving around a lot of money as part of closings. So that is a very big target. But even if you're in a different kind of practice, or a real estate agent, or you just have a computer. Hackers want to get into your system and they want to use your systems to be able to commit their crimes to the intended victims, you know, because hackers never use their own computer systems. So, so it's called low hanging fruit. They look for small businesses, small law firms, realtors, other people that they can just get in and use their systems or they can steal their address books and then send out a whole bunch of, you know, fake emails. Those are phishing emails to see what, who they can lure in. So that, so that's what's, what's going on. So first of all, you have to have the mindset. You have to think like a hacker. So that's really important for you to do that. You also have to have all the protections in place. It's really important that you have good firewalls, good antivirus, um, email security. You know, if you're running, if you're running a, a law firm practice, you get a lot of emails every day. Well, there's email security that can filter out a lot of that garbage so that you don't click on it to begin with. So having the basic security in place is just the start, though. It's not enough to have that because half the battle can't be solved by technology. I don't want to scare everybody out there, but that's the truth. The, the sad truth is that hackers are making billions and billions of dollars stealing from you and me and whoever they can get their hands on. And so it's really important to have training too, cybersecurity training and ongoing training. And that's something that uh, all of our businesses uh, should be should be doing. I've been to a bunch of continuing legal ed classes, continuing ed classes on cybersecurity where they just kind of talk about the, the topic, but you hinted at um, something that a lot of those seminars seem to skip over, and that is answering what what are they after in the first place? Um, we can start to talk about how they get into our systems, how they break in, what to avoid, but what do they want from our businesses in the first place? That's a great question. Access to your computer. Because if they can get into your computer, not only can they steal the data from it, uh, but they're after the address book. That's really important because now, Rory, if I get your address book and I have access to your email, I can now send to all of your clients, contacts, friends, family. I can send emails that a good majority of people will click on because it came from you because I trust Rory. He's my attorney or he's my friend or cousin. You know, this is the kind of thing that hackers are looking for. So that's the first thing. The second thing is they're looking for passwords. It's really, um, and, and if they can get access to your systems and they do that for through a variety of ways, but the number one way they get in is through phishing emails. That's those fake emails that come from your bank or come from a friend or somebody you know, and you click on a link that's embedded in there and then you're giving access to hackers. So so they're looking they're looking for that as well so that they can spread their attacks to 
others. So those are the two big things that they're looking for. So um, Rory actually has had, I'm sure he has a list of a couple things that he has experienced, but you know, the one that I could think of has happened multiple times to you and to your agents, where your agents are subtly getting text messages from what seems like it's you asking to go get gift cards from Home Depot or Walmart or somewhere and put money on them and I do with them or send the code or I, I don't know exactly what this specific scam is. I'm sure Eric knows exactly what I'm talking about, but it's happened a couple times to your whole team and not to name names, but there have been a couple folks that basically at the store <laughs> to get these gift cards, which shocks me that people would go to that length. But it, the, it's just a common thing. Jason. Yeah. The text messages seemed so genuine. It seemed like it was Rory asking them these questions. And then, you know, it wasn't. So hackers get our information in a variety of ways. It can be from our websites. It can be, there's other, uh, you know, the dark web, the, which is a black market of information. And, and so they create these realistic looking text messages or emails. And I cannot begin to tell you how many times I have seen this kind of attack work where the gift cards actually went out. And, and it's, and it's very sad. It's very sad because that once that money goes, it's gone. And, and the way that it works is they'll get a text message from Rory or even interestingly enough, my um, front desk person at my office received a text from me asking her to go get gift cards, mm -hmm. which I thought was hilarious. And she immediately brought it to my attention, which was, which was really good. But, but then it, it'll always go something like this. Hey, are you available? I need you to do me a favor. Uh, I'm in the middle of something, so I can't talk on the phone right now, but can you please go down to the pharmacy or the store and get me some gift cards, 10 gift cards for $100 a piece, and then uh, take a picture of the backs, you know, scratch off the, um, the code on the back there so I can see it and send me a picture of it. Thanks so much. And, and it works. People do that. You know, the, we are all as as um you know human beings we, we want to please people and so if our boss is asking for something there is a good chance that we will not question the boss and we will go and do as he's asking or she you know so it's really it's it's really important to know that you know what your boss is not going to ask you to go and use your own money and credit card to go and buy gift cards and and if that's ever the case the best practice here is just pick up the phone please don't text back or email back mm -hmm. because I'll give you a situation that we've seen in the past as well. Someone's legitimate mailbox, usually it's through office 365 or it could be Gmail or whatever has been compromised. And the hacker is actually reading the email and responding to the email. So if you get one of those text messages and you write back, Hey, Rory, is that, did you really want me to do this Rory? Mm -hmm. And the hacker's going to write back and say, of course, yeah, can you please take care of this for me? It is always important, if something isn't quite right, pick mm -hmm. up the phone and just confirm. It's really important that you do this. And uh, a lot of uh, people who are working for us, maybe some of uh, uh, the younger folks, they don't necessarily like talking on the phone, no, which can be a challenge because everybody does text and Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff. But but it's really important to get verbal confirmation when, when dollars are at stake. All right. There's another quick take with the Real Estate Law Podcast. For the full episode, go to YouTube or Spotify or iTunes or wherever you heard or listened to that quick take. We also have all of our episodes posted at realestatelawpodcast.com. So on behalf of Rory Gill, I'm Jason Muth, one of your hosts, and we thank you for listening. <laughs>